Okay, let's talk about Frederick Skinner. Okay, uh, who talked, who who introduced the notion of operant conditioning. Now, basically, he started working with rats and pigeons. Okay, and the theory of Skinner was based on the idea that learning is a function of change in overt behavior. So basically, one big importance that you need to pay attention is overt behavior is intentional external behavior. Okay, and and later I will describe how uh, Skinner's work is uh, different from uh, than Pavlov's work. Okay, now he introduced the notion of operant means to act upon uh, mostly externally. Okay, and he started off his experiment by putting a hungry rat in a box. It sounds almost similar to Pavlov. He puts a dog in an, uh, puts a rat in an ang angry box, and each time the rat presses a lever, a food pellet will be given. And this result, the rat pressing the lever each time it wanted food. So there was a, a an overtly behavior ex ex exhibited by the rat every time the bear, uh, the rat wanted to be rewarded with food. Now the change in behavior or learning by the rat is the result of the animal's response to events. In this case, it was a stimulus that occurred in the environment. So the learning is actually a response to a stimulus. So from, from Skinner's point of view, in order for truly learning to take place, you must create stimulus because learning is a response to a stimulus. So you can't force someone into learning. If you do that, learning will never take place or it will only be surface of really, really superficial. Skinner argued that learning is a response to a stimulus. So a teacher's job is to orchestrate the stimulus to make, so to, to make learning take place. So for example, uh, a student will say, okay, if you finish all the homework on time, you can do a, you watch your favorite TV program. So basically the TV program is kept as a bait and the learning will take place. But that's only a shallow end. The deeper end is to actually to get the fee, uh, to provide a deeper meaning why the learning should need to place because the, the, the solutions that the learning can bring to the organism or in this case the student will be favorable and rewarding or most importantly pleasurable. So reinforcement is the key element of uh, Skinner's SR theory, stimulus response theory. So he kept talking about the notion of being repetitively rewarded for an individual to uh, as, a, as a reinforcement notion to bring about learning. So a reinforcer could be anything. Uh, parents just saying good work, a child obtaining A in history which gives the child feeling of accomplishment and satisfaction. Okay, the example, These are all pos examples of positive reinforcement. Now there is also something called the negative reinforcement. Uh, negative reinforcement, re uh, negative reinforcement which are any stimulus that are given rise to response when it's withdrawn. Okay, So for example, a rat will press a lever to stop electric shock being given, for example. Now, when we wear safety belt before we drive our car, for especially for those of us who actually wear safety belt before we drive our car, now are you moving towards a positive reinforcement or trying to avoid a negative reinforcement? Because not everyone sees uh, wearing a safety belt as a notion of safety, although cognitively we say, yeah, yeah. But most of us actually do it in order not to be penalized by wearing a safety belt. Uh, okay, the very big difference that you need to know is what's the difference between classical conditioning and operant conditioning. See, in Pavlov's classical conditioning, the dog was not able to change his environment. You know, it was basically kept in a cage, uh, the food was brought to him, the bell was introduced. It just behaved without having any choice or decision. Whereas uh, in, in operant conditioning, the organism, in this case the, the rat, had a choice to act or not to act because the response was determined by stimulus of the food. So in this case, the food was a stimulus. There the bell was a neutral stimulus that was tricked into accepting. So here it was a natural choice. Okay, the organism has a choice to act or not to act. In operant conditioning, it has been widely applied in behavior modification, classroom management, instructional design. 
So this is it's one of those strategies that we use in the in uh, widely used in classroom management. Partly because in from Skinner's perspective or using Skinner's perspective, one could uh, systematically orchestrate the stimulus. Remember, Skinner talked about learning as a response to a stimulus. Uh, so in many ways, it's much more positivist rather than uh, if you stick to Pavlov where. Uh, you have to trick someone into a neutral stimulus following a response that is required. Okay. Now, next, let's talk about Walter Bandura. Okay. He introduced the, the social aspect of learning. He believed that, uh, emphasizes the importance of observing and modeling the behavior, attitudes, and emotional reaction of others. So according to Bandura, learning would, would be a slow process if people had to rely solely on their own efforts to do anything. Fortunately, a substantial amount of human behavior is learned by observing others. For students to learn, he or she must watch and pay attention to a model and the behavior being modeled. Okay, the information observed must be retained in some form of memory. Next, the student must have a necessary motor and cognitive skills to reproduce the model behavior. Now, however, the motivation to the observe, uh, motivation to observe and reproduce the model behavior depends whether the students, uh, student will drive satisfaction of reproducing this behavior, uh, observed behavior. So basically, what Bandura is saying is this: a lot of learning is not sequential that means we don't learn sequence step by step ourselves we we just re we emulate others uh, so example from this picture the child is trying to emulate a, a hero who's riding a super bike a huge bike which is glamorized within the society that child lives in so it drives satisfaction in trying to emulate the behavior and, and from Bandura's work has been exploited tremendously by the advertising industry because they believe by, by portraying a, a, a desirable condition upon consuming a device, a de, uh, consuming a device or consuming a particular product that you will appeal to, you'll be able to achieve a particular status of desire. So people will now model you by consuming this product. So if you they generally will portray eating McDonald's will give you happiness. Going to a particular college will give you fulfillment. Or putting on a particular form of branded clothes will give you glamour or status in society. So this is what Bandura was talking about. That learning uh, from a social perspective is observable and modelling. And using that uh, effectively will contribute towards learning in a meaningful way.